My dearest brothers and sisters, this is Tunia speaking. I love you so very much. Humans are a communal species. Being loved and accepted by the group is a need that most humans have. Maybe you personally don't feel that need anymore, but almost certainly you felt that need when you were a child and perhaps a young adult. This makes sense, because children and teenagers are dependent for their well-being or even survival on being accepted by other people however, to remain loved and accepted, children are often indirectly told that they need to suppress parts of themselves. For example, children are told that they're not allowed to get angry, or they're not allowed to be lazy, or they should stop daydreaming, or they need to be practical, or they need to be responsible or they should suppress their innate food or bedtime preferences and instead they should eat or sleep as they're told. Now, parents don't do this because they're evil. To an extent, this is simply necessary, you shouldn't allow a child to just always eat or do what it wants. And if you don't do what is considered socializing a child, they might get into trouble at school. Now, earth education is very problematic, but an individual parent may have little choice but to conform to it which may mean teaching their child to suppress parts of itself so that the child can be squeezed into the education mold. Now, to an extent, telling children what to do and what not to do is completely fine and doesn't harm them. But if a child is for example never allowed to get angry, then most likely a split will be created inside the child. The angry part of the child will be split off and become a repressed inner part. This repressed part is conscious, it knows what is going on, it has emotions and opinions and you can talk to it. But it is not the dominant part of the child's personality, the dominant part of the child's personality will be one without anger, because that's what the child needs to be to remain safe in an environment that doesn't tolerate anger. It's entirely possible that a person's angry part will be split off when they're a child, and then 30 years later they're not even aware anymore that they have an internal angry inner part. They just think of themselves as a person who doesn't get angry, and they just think that's their personality. And sure, people exist who genuinely don't get angry and who genuinely don't have an angry inner part. Yet, people also exist who don't get angry because their anger was split off into a repressed inner part of themselves. Similarly, a child's home might be very chaotic, and the parents may be either literally or metaphorically absent and so the child may decide at a very young age to take care of their younger brother or sister, possibly without someone explicitly telling them to do so. In this case, the part of the child that is immature and that just wants to be a normal carefree child might get split off because the child feels that it needs to be responsible and mature at a very young age. And adults might marvel at how responsible this child is, but the truth is that there may be an unhappy, suppressed inner child inside the person. Or a child might get bullied at school and not get any help, and they might create a personality that can either fight off bullies or that seemingly doesn't care about being bullied. This kind of fabricated protector personality can be functional in the short term, but the more vulnerable and in pain parts of the child's personality might again get split off and become unconscious. Most people on earth have several suppressed, split off, probably unconscious parts within themselves. This is part of why sometimes the people around you can strangely and dramatically change their mind, or suddenly turn warm or cold, or make sudden drastic decisions, or not keep their word. They don't literally have several personalities, but suppressed parts of their personality are sometimes poking their head through and sometimes not, which means that sometimes a person behaves a bit differently than normal. I recommend that people work to integrate split-off parts of themselves. I also recommend that people try not to bulldoze split-off parts of themselves. Why? Well, doing so will positively contribute to your happiness and mental health and feeling of everything being alright. So, how do you integrate split-off parts of yourself? Well, if you feel a sudden urge in a direction that's not normal for you, consider observing it, and if appropriate consider doing it. So if you love to draw as a child, but haven't drawn in decades, and now suddenly you feel an urge to draw again, feel free to do so. And don't worry about the quality or the drawing. This urge to draw might be an unintegrated inner child poking its head through and wanting to play. And doing so might help integrate this part of you. 
or if you feel an almost unreasonable or irrational resistance to something, see if you can come to an arrangement with that inner part of you. For example, if you have an appointment but you suddenly really want to stay home, then consider either staying home, or at least clearing some stay home time in your calendar in the near future. You can think is there a part of me that wants this, or that doesn't want this. The first thing that pops into your mind may be that inner part of you answering or it might just be mind noise. Often you will have a pretty decent idea of what parts of your personality might be suppressed. If you feel like you are not allowed to do something, or if you feel a very strong pull towards something, that might point to a suppressed part of your personality. If you simply engage in a healthy manner in those activities that a certain split-off part of you wants, without resisting it, then that part of you will after a time automatically reintegrate into you, which is a very positive thing. That will make you more whole. The second thing that I mentioned is not bulldozing parts of yourself. So for example, if you weren't allowed to get angry as a child and now as an adult you feel anger coming up, then if possible allow yourself to get angry. Sure, common sense is still important. Perhaps don't get angry at work. But then if possible allow yourself to get angry back at home, for example. If you weren't allowed to get angry as a child, and as an adult you keep suppressing your anger in all situations, then you're bulldozing parts of yourself. Unfortunately, Earth's spiritual community sometimes nudges people in the direction of bulldozing parts of themselves. For example, if a person had a bad childhood and they say that they haven't forgiven their parents, then many spiritual people will think that he or she isn't very spiritually advanced yet. On the other hand, if someone says they had a bad childhood and they have forgiven their parents, then many spiritual people will think of that second person as quite spiritually advanced. Now, if someone genuinely forgives people who wronged them, and has no inner parts that are still unhappy or unseen, then that is indeed a quite advanced spiritual state. However, what often happens on earth is that people say I forgive those who wronged me when they have inner parts that aren't ready to forgive yet. And that, in fact, is a person bulldozing the parts of themselves that aren't yet ready to forgive.